Hello, my neurotech heroes. If you've been thinking about buying a NeoRhythm PEMF device, there are some new competitors and changes in governmental regulations that you will want to hear about before you dive right into the magnetic brain stimulation device market. The NeoRhythm uses low amplitude magnetic pulses to synchronize your brain waves into different patterns to include alpha for relaxation, delta for sleep, and beta for attention. The company is based in Slovenia, which is part of the European Union. There are new European regulations on health and wellness devices in the near future that may put Near Rhythm's business model in jeopardy, unfortunately. And we'll have more on that soon here in this video. There are also new products like this wearable PMF hat called Shift out of Orange County, California that's made a recent splash in the consumer market and in academia that may compete for the same customers that would benefit from a Neorhythm. In this video, we're going to take a look at the differences between Shift and Neorhythm to help you decide which one to buy if you're interested in this market. We will be discussing ease of use, discretion, training variety, practical impact, and cost while keeping upcoming governmental regulations in mind. After working with these wearable devices for well over 10 years now, the value of ease of use has become increasingly apparent to me. A few weeks ago, I took Shift and Neorhythm out to some family members for them to try. One of my aunts has fibromyalgia, so I thought it would be great for her to try for her symptoms of anxiety and chronic pain. So my wife and I went over to their house and showed them the devices. And with Shift, it was literally as simple as you take this hat when you're feeling anxious or you have a headache, you press this button on the front and you leave it on for about 20 minutes and see how you feel. No app, no complex buttons, and extremely simple. Now, because she has knee and ankle pain, I took the Neorhythm pad out to put under her leg. So I'm trying to explain to her how to download the app. Okay, here's the app store. Oh, you forgot your Apple ID, look that up. Okay, finally got the Apple ID. Now we have the app. Oh, your device isn't connecting to the pad through Bluetooth, you have to restart your phone. So basically what I found out when trying to use these devices with my family members is that there are a lot of ease of use barriers to get over when you're trying to show someone how to use the Neo Rhythm. It literally took less than 30 seconds to show her the shift hat, have her put it on, press the button, and sit there and let it do its thing. Whereas with Neo Rhythm, it took over 30 minutes to download the app, get her phone connected via Bluetooth to the device and show her how to turn it on and off. It was just so much more complicated and took up way more time. And that double tap feature on the Neo Rhythm, I mean, I think it was a fun idea, but it is so confusing for people that are not tech savvy. And I have to say that that lighting indicator is really bad. Now for someone like me that uses these devices often, it's really easy for me to set up and it takes about five minutes, but it's definitely difficult to use on people who are not used to working with wearable devices through their phones. So for ease of use, I am giving Shift a five out of five, but Neorhythm only a three out of five. Another thing that became apparent to me on this last family trip is that there's definitely still a stigma against having technology affect your mind in any way, especially in a direct stimulation effect. For instance, I love my grandfather, who's a bright and an intelligent man, but he outright told my aunt not to try the Shift hat when he saw it. Now he's in his 80s and he's had a stroke before, but I think that he's still quite lucid and his opinions are pretty representative of his generation. Any talk of magnetic pulses affecting your brain rhythms, even if they make you more relaxed and help you out, made him quite uneasy and to be honest, downright paranoid. He basically said, there's just no reason for it. Now, obviously my opinions are different than that. It made me think a lot about how these technologies look and what that means for mainstream adoption. For instance, I think the emotive epoch looks like the coolest thing to me, but it's probably quite intimidating and even unsettling to people who are uninformed about neurotechnology and its current capabilities. So any explanation that this thing won't take away your free will, for instance, may not be as well received as 
you would think. And I would say the Neo Rhythm headband falls into the similar category as Emotive Epoch. It looks really cool and interesting to neurotech enthusiasts, but it may be intimidating to people who are not into neurotech and just looking for relief of anxiety or chronic pain symptoms. They don't want to be perceived by other people as weird for wearing it. They don't want to really stand out by wearing it at work, for instance. And this again is where Shift really comes out on top. I mean, I've had several people tell me that it looks like the hat that the Red Ribbon Army wore from Dragon Ball, but I think it looks really cool and it's similar to other hats that I would like to wear. So I feel comfortable wearing this out in public and would be just fine wearing it in an office setting or even in the grocery store. And because of that fact alone, you and your family are probably more likely to use it more often and get more value out of it because you're not worried about what other people are thinking and will wear it around in different settings. In the past, I honestly wouldn't have considered looks to limit neurotech stigma a category for these devices, but I think I've had a blind spot over the years that I've become more aware of as we start to integrate this technology into clothing, VR goggles, and headphones. The mainstream really wants these brainwave data collection and brainwave altering devices to be invisible in most cases. So for discretion, I give Shift 5 out of 5 and Near Rhythm 3 out of 5. The next category may not be very fair to Shift since they just came on the market and the Near Rhythm has been around for a few years, but currently there's only one setting for the Shift hat that largely puts your brain into an alpha-like pattern, which is great for relaxation, meditation, and helping with headache or migraine pain. And you could potentially put the hat over different pain areas to see if that helps, but honestly it wasn't really designed for that. In contrast, the Neo Rhythm offers nine different settings that you can try out with all different types of frequency combinations for sleep, relaxation, energy, and chronic pain. And they also have pad and pillow form factors if you want to use it exclusively to help with chronic pain or insomnia. So for training variety, Shift gets three out of five, whereas Neo Rhythm gets five out of five. Obviously the most important thing for these devices is, what is their practical impact on people that use them? So this is what I've seen from my perspective as far as PEMF goes. These devices definitely do induce slower brain rhythms. I've experienced this many times while wearing them during meditation sessions and relaxing in the house. And I've also got EEG data on it to show associated brainwave changes. My friends and family have experienced these relaxing effects as well. This could definitely be beneficial for dealing with anxiety and the slower brain rhythms also could help aid you in going to sleep but I'm not going to call this a magic pill for anxiety or insomnia. PEMF is definitely its own unique sensation when you wear these devices, so I struggled to come up with direct comparisons with pharmaceuticals, but if I had to say, the alpha rhythms of Shift and Neo Rhythm feel somewhat like a hydroxyzine, which is used by psychiatrists as an off-label medication for anxiety and panic attacks. And I will note that the Shift effect feels stronger than the Neo Rhythm, which may be due to the fact that there's more coil units embedded in the hat than within the Neo Rhythm uh, form factor. And the fact that the coils are all around your head creates a multi-directional effect that seems to be stronger than what Neo Rhythm can do at the moment. Keep in mind that the Neo Rhythm has more settings to include Delta, which is a slower brainwave than Alpha, that definitely makes you drowsy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll fall asleep faster or have higher quality sleep. To me, it's kind of like taking a Benadryl. It makes you drowsy, but it doesn't necessarily work with everybody. So having trial periods to see if it works for you is really important in these cases. I did try to use my Aura Ring to track my sleep with and without the Neo Rhythm pad on the Delta setting, but I didn't see any noticeable difference in my sleep quality according to the Aura Ring. Neither did my wife, but neither of us have insomnia, so it's actually kind of difficult for me to test. And I had taken the pad to a family member that does have insomnia, but when I checked back after a week or two, they hadn't even downloaded the app, which was just another demonstration of these ease of use barriers that Neo Rhythm has to get people to use it more. When you look on the Neo Rhythm website, there's a lot of use cases of people that have really improved their chronic pain with the device. And the same goes for Shift as far as chronic pain goes. When you look at the literature in a 2009 randomized controlled trial with sham and PEMF treatment with 
women that have fibromyalgia, there was a statistically significant reduction in pain and depression scores after three weeks with two 30-minute sessions a day. Another meta-analysis found that PEMF could be helpful for knee and hand osteoarthritis. And this 2021 paper took a look at the cellular responses on a cellular and molecular level when cells in a test tube were exposed to PEMF, and they actually found evidence of healthy gene expression, proliferation of healthy cells, and even death of cancer cells. I'll definitely include the links to those papers below in the description. If you're curious, check them out. So my aunt that I lent the device to has not noticed a huge difference in her pain levels yet, although it's only been a couple of weeks and she thinks that she's making some progress. So it's definitely not a magic cure for chronic pain, but in a world where we are struggling with opioids, I definitely think it's worth a try. It definitely sounds like the PEMF technology helped Nadia, the co-founder of Fluxware, so it might work for you and it really might come down to doing a trial period to see if it helps you with your symptoms. And that's where we get into the geographical complications with the Neorhythm. Honestly, because they are in Slovenia and don't cover shipping costs, getting the device back if you feel like it doesn't work for you can be expensive, difficult, and cumbersome. Uh, Shift is definitely easier to return, especially if you're in the States because the devices are just going back to California. Also, the Neorhythm team has a lot of work to do in accumulating evidence and making the case to the European Union that they have efficacy because of new EU laws. I still really enjoy the Neorhythm, and I don't think that they're going out of business anytime soon, but I hope that they are able to get good clinical efficacy data to convince the EU that they should continue to sell their device on the open market. And the good news is that the EU keeps extending the regulation transition period because a lot of medical device companies are complaining about the strict regulatory measures and struggling to comply with the paperwork. Like most of medicine, we're finding that most symptoms and diseases are multifactorial, and PEMF may only help with a certain type of chronic pain, maybe the type where you have dysregulated ion gradients across damaged cells within inflamed tissue, but that might not always be the etiology in chronic pain cases, so PEMF may only work in a handful of cases where that is the actual cellular damage. So for practical impact, I'm putting both of these devices at 3.5 out of 5. It could really help you for various symptoms, but more research needs to be done, and a trial period is really important as the individual consumer. Honestly, I really wanted to put both of them at 4 out of 5, but as a physician and as a scientist, I cannot in good conscience do that until more research is done. As far as cost, Shift is quite expensive at $595. Now there's a lot to justify this cost to include several patents, an incredibly easy and stylish design, and hopefully a lot of practical impact. The good news is that you can try it and return it after 30 days, and if you are in the US, it should be really easy to return because they are stateside. Also, they are offering a 15% discount to our Tech for Psych audience if you use the link below in the description of this video and apply the code Dr. Cody Rall at the checkout. In comparison, the Neorhythm is more affordable at $300 with a 60-day trial period but it might be more difficult to return. And I haven't heard of anybody not getting their money back. And again, Neorhythm has more settings than Shift and more form factors, which I think is their main advantage at this point. As always, thanks for watching. If you wanna see my brainwave experiments with the Neorhythm, check out this video here, and I'll see you on the other side.